Hey, it's time for Tech Talk number 18. Boy, it's like we've been doing this since January. You guys just dig Tech Talk. And tonight, we've got a great show because we're going to talk about where you are, George, which is in Jerry Pelletier's studio. That's right, down in West Palm Beach. And it's a well-equipped studio beyond what many voice actors have. So we'll go through some of the, a lot of the tech that's here. We get to really geek out. And we have a special, special guest also happens to be in town at the same time is Guillermo from Studio Bricks. He runs the, the, the North American USA department, and uh, he, it's just cool to have him here. We got This is a unique opportunity, everybody. Get in here. We'll, give us your questions. Right. Get them in the chat room right now. Voice over Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. All right, I'm Dan Leonard out west. George Whittem back east. All right, and this is voiceover Body Shop or VO BS Tech, Tech Talk. Talk. Talk, talk, talk. So, <laughs> so you're down there in Florida, uh, visiting a really nice studio. I am. I am. Jerry uh, Pelletier down here has a fantastic studio in his home, and he's in an area where there's a there's just aren't great production studios or really any voiceover production studios especially studios that are equipped with ISDN. Um, and so he's got a unique location and he's reached out. Uh, he's, he's made himself available to, uh, to those who need studios and he can deliver definitely like full blown commercial grade quality audio out of this place. So I came here five years ago, did my first go around. Now I'm back. Now he's got a new, bigger, larger, studio brick studio and we'll go through that and some of the other things that are in this place that make it special very cool and if you've got a question throw it in the chat room either either on vobs.tv or in facebook depending on where you're watching live uh mm -hmm. any tech question at all on your home studio george and i would love to answer it and make sure that uh, you 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 get uh, the right answer even if we've right. made it up which we never do because <laughs> if George and I don't know it, you don't need to know it. If we make it up, call us on it, will you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one ever has. Uh, anyway, so uh, in your tech update tonight, uh, you, when you were up in Toronto a couple of weeks ago, you got to talk to a rep from Steinberg. And uh, what, what's that all about? Yeah, Yamaha is the uh, parent company of Steinberg, and uh, they brought out some new uh, audio interfaces that have a unique twist to them. That's what I'm going to talk about in the video. So we might as well roll it and chat about it. All right. Go for it, Sue. 
Hey everybody, this is George the Tech for VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm here at VO North, the second year they've done this. And uh, a little space off to the side, there's a, a mic and gear shootout room and it's sponsored by uh, and supported by Yamaha Steinberg. And from that company today, I've got a rep who's gonna give us a little information about their Steinberg interface that is got an interesting twist to it. So we've got some gear here today and to introduce it to us, we have uh, Christopher O'Reilly from, it's Yamaha Steinberg. How, yeah. how are you guys related? Well, I actually work for Yamaha Canada, which is the, uh, the Yamaha distributor subsidiary in Canada. Um, Steinberg is actually one of the companies that uh, Yamaha owns. So that's kind of what we're here to talk about a little yeah. bit today uh, is our URRT series of interfaces. So uh, a lot of people in the voiceover and podcasting community are probably already familiar with our UR series of interfaces, which are very budget friendly, um, you know, one, two, four, and eight channel versions. So what we've done with the RT series is we've actually partnered up with Rupert Neve Designs. Uh, for those of you who aren't really all that familiar with Rupert, um, Rupert goes back a long way. He's sort of a, a mecca and a legend in the audio industry, known for building consoles and preamps. The Neve 1073 was probably one yeah. of the most sought after preamps ever. Um, so once he sort of, he hasn't retired, but he started his own company called Rupert Neve Designs a few years ago um, and we've actually partnered with them so what Rupert did was he actually designed a custom transformer to work with the Depre and the electronics in the UR series of interface to make the mic preamp sound just that little bit better um, the nice thing about it is though is that it is you can either engage it or take it out of the signal path entirely so you either have just the standard Depre which um, very very clean very very versatile you know good headroom nice level preamp that's going to sound good on everything and very usable for whatever uh, feature you need it for um, but then it also gives you the opportunity to add the Rupert Neve transformer into the signal path um, it's a little difficult to display explain what transformers actually do they just make the audio sound better uh, and most people once they push that button and engage the transformer never again turn it off it just adds a bit of richness and harmonic content to the sound that makes the voice almost sound a little bit bigger um, let, me, let me ask you this so um, if the transformer sounds better why isn't it already in everything? So why is it a feature and not just like part of the gear? Well, uh, transformers certainly add extra production costs to uh, to gear in general. So I mean, with the UR and the URRT, um, it's a it's a definite jump up in price. You know, it's, it's a couple hundred dollars more expensive to get the transformer aspect in there. Um, but I mean, transformers are very sought after. Some people really like the sound, some people don't. Um, if you're looking for very clean and pristine, the nice thing about this is that it does give you that option with just the Depre. But if you're looking for something that's just a little bigger, you know, maybe give you that little one up on, a, on an audition or something else, then the, uh, the transformer will certainly add that little bit of punch to the sound. The, a lot of the simpler interfaces like the UR12, they're sort of a, you install the driver, it's plug and play and off you go. This one has its own console, right, that, that controls it makes it a little bit more complicated to set up at first, maybe? Actually, no, it's it's, uh, it's it's no more complicated. All of our UR series of interfaces actually come with that same console software, yeah. uh, right from our UR12 all the way up to our brand new Thunderbolt interface, the AXR4T. Um, the interfaces are slightly different depending on which model you buy, whether it's UR, URRT, or AXR, but they all give you the functionality of routability inside. Um, but if you just install it and leave it alone, it is no more difficult to set up than the plug and play of the, the UR12. Matter of fact, when you download Download the driver package from Steinberg. It automatically installs the console, and you can decide whether you want to use it or not. So you can actually you can you can set your software up, your doll, whatever, to use this thing, and never even open the console. It'll it'll function. Absolutely. All you do is you just make sure that uh, your DAW is looking for the the Steinberg driver, and you have all the functionality as well. So yeah, very cool. Well, I appreciate it. It's been educational. I always try to give you guys a little more information than just the tech stuff, but Transformers, something interesting to play with in your studio and see if it adds something useful for you. It makes it a unique piece of gear to have that uh, extra, extra bell and whistle built in. So anyway, this is George the Tech. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. Thank and you. Uh, we'll see you guys around on the web. Take care. And we're back. Well, that was interesting. I mean, talking about, you know, transformers and making things a little bit warmer and stuff. Do they really understand what you need to do in voiceover? What was your thought on that, George?
Well, I mean, I I think he, you know, what he basically said was like, you know, you're probably going to want a clean sound, like, you know, not with the transformer, unless you find it sounds better. And it depends on the project you're doing and the, the context, the voice, your voice quality, the microphone you're using, all of these different things. But, you know, um, it's one of those things, I don't know, with gear, it's like, I like a pure clean sound that's un, that's undirtied up. But some people find a little bit of dirt, and that's what a transformer does. It a transformer is one of those things that, in in similar in a similar way to a vacuum tube, but not exactly the same. It adds some distortion. It it's not as ultra clean and accurate when you add the transformer in. And like what he said, it was it adds harmonic content. And what's harmonic content? It basically adds audio that wasn't actually there before. It wasn't there to begin with, and. Uh, is that good or is that bad? That is remains to be seen. It's something to experiment with. Right. Depends, um, but depends, it's just yeah. depends sorry. on what you're working on. Depends on what you're working on, and uh, you know people are always trying to find, if, especially if you're doing production or producing, trying to find a thing that makes their sound a little bit different and you know gives them the edge, and uh, that's the kind of thing they might like to play around with. But anyway, I've been very happy with the quality of that Steinberg stuff. The hardware is made by Yamaha, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that. And, well, you know, the AG03, the AG06, the UR12, which we've been recommending a lot more lately. All of these are cut from the same cloth in terms of the, the preamps and all that. And, uh, you know, their quality is, is definitely been proven. And it, oh, I like it very much. Yeah. Well, you don't seem to be alone there anymore. Uh, no, I <laughs> seem to have a few guys lurking over my shoulder. Introduce One us. of them. One of them who I owe an apology for, for misintroducing him at the top of the show. First of all, right over here, right on, I'm going to slap him on the knee because, you know, we're really close to each other right now. And I'm tired. I'm a little bit loopy. <laughs> Is Miguel. Miguel came in from New York City to visit and see uh, Jerry's studio. How are you doing tonight? Hi, how are you? Thanks for making the, making the trek down here. Did you, did you come... Well, let me ask you this, Jerry, and this is Jerry Pell, the Jerry Pelletier, by the way. I'm not doing a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, how did it come together? So, was I coming? Did Did you know I was come? How did you? How did this all come? Together? How are we all here at the same time? How did this well, come? Together? I got a new booth, and I think I was the third person in the United States to have a Studio Bricks booth. I, Mike Bratton in New York had one, then Matt Wewell had uh, the second booth, and I was the third one. And uh, I've been in contact with Guillermo, who's in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, for many years. And then uh, Miguel, of course, started Studio Bricks USA. And then when I bought my next booth, this one here, uh, Guillermo still remembered me. He, he FaceTimed me from some beach somewhere <laughs> and, uh, and laughed. He goes, I remember you because I gave him a hard time as to some of the things I was doing to the booth and stuff like that. And, and uh, then I gave Miguel a hard time when I ordered my new booth because I wanted everything so-so. Oh, man. Yeah. That's so meticulous. That, <laughs> particular. So I think, you know, we talked to uh, Guillermo, and then Miguel said uh, he's, he wanted to come down and take a look at some of the things. And I said, well, George is going to be here, and he wanted to come down at the same time. Well, you see where the name Guillermo comes in. So Guillermo's – what's Guillermo's last name? Guillermo Jumbauer. Jumbauer. Yeah. <laughs> he's the, the founder? The founder. The founder, of the Rick, creator. Yeah. Um, tell us how you're involved with Studio Bricks and how that came, how did, what is your position and, and what is it you do with Studio Bricks? So I knew Studio Bricks from the very beginning. I really liked the product and I spent one year here. Uh, I came to United States to you know, improve my, my English and I was in, studying in NYU and yeah. then I wanted to stay here a little bit more. So, mm -hmm. um, and I thought that, you know, I spoke with Guillermo and I thought that it would be a really great idea to uh, create the, uh, or found the, the Studio Bricks USA. And I am the owner of the company Studio Bricks USA and also oh. the business, the business partner of Guillermo there in, you know, in the HQ, mm -hmm. Studio Bricks HQ. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So... I met Guillermo, you know, from, you know, I, I, I met Guillermo since I was a child. So, oh my God, yeah. you guys go way back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Guillermo's a real cerebral kind of guy. 
He he thinks yeah. he, he thinks in great detail, doesn't he? He's an engineer, right? Yeah, he's a he, technical guy. He's an engineer he, designer. He's yes, he's a technical designer. Uh, he was uh, he started with an architect and with an engineer, also a sound engineer. And you know, three of them they develop this this amazing brand, right? And the products that we you can right now like buy in the, the market. Mm -hmm. Well, what's really unique about Studio Bricks? Everybody talks about it. You know, it's like, I got to have a Studio Bricks. What is it that's unique about it that, that people really like? You know, I mean, we know it's designed for musicians and we use it in voiceover for isolation. What makes it that much better than, say, some of the other the competitors? Well, uh, first of all, um, uh, following our, you know, our customer reviews, it's like it's uh, not only the design that the, the design is completely different from you know from for other brands, completely different, and and then also uh, the quality of the materials, the quality of the of the sound uh, when you are recording, um, everyone and the system of course the studio brick system how you can like assemble the booth. In you know, in not you know, it's, it's going to take you like you know a couple of hours. It depends, of course, of the size of the booth. But it's you know, it's pretty, it's pretty easy when you are a little bit familiarized with the pieces and 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 the system is is unique. It's patented, uh, of course, uh, worldwide, and and it's 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 kind of is everything is kind of different, right? All of them they are. Like it's a lady booth, you know, for recording recording studios, but Studio Bricks is is kind of different in design, in, in quality, in you know, in in also the like, quality of, of of the sound inside of the booth. Yeah, well, I know Jerry. When Jerry bought that booth, he was just re recalling that he was one of the, one of the very earlier early buyers of the booth, and. Um, how do, I mean, there was a lot of booths out there. I mean, when you take it, when you buy a product that's new and not a lot of voiceovers are using it, you take a little chance to try something new. You know, you didn't buy one of the more established, more popular. How did you decide to settle on this booth over what else was out there? What was the deciding factor? Well, thankfully, Mike Bratton, who had bought the first one, was very good. He's, we talked quite a bit, and then Matt, we will have bought his as well. But just aesthetically, looking at the booth, it's mm -hmm. different than any other booth on the market. I mean, it just Definitely. looks clearly aesthetically. It's sexy. A whole different, yeah, <laughs> whole different. Class. And I'll tell you what the the products that come with the booth, the door is a substantial piece. That's definitely what. It, when it I takes first, three people to carry it. And yeah. it's, it's a big, heavy door. And it's it's but substantial, that's but that's usually works. the weak spot in a lot of yeah. booths, if you will. Definitely. And and the windows that they engineer. I mean, the engineering that went into these booths, I'd say, is just far and away better than any other booth that's on the market. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's fun to put together. <laughs> Great excuse Giant to have Legos. a party, you know? Giant Lego. <laughs> yeah. this, one, this one, this one, this one, this one. You know, once, once you figure out, oh, you go in a circle and build it up like that, it's like, oh, there's nothing to it. And then again, it comes apart real easy, which is not necessarily the same of some of the competitors, where you have to get a you know, a gang of slaves to carry out these huge, heavy walls and stuff. Studio Bricks isn't like that. Yeah, this is definitely, uh, you know, again, other than the door, you can't take glass pieces apart yet. Maybe Guillermo might be working on that back in Spain. But um, at this point, no, that's the one thing that's going to be the heavy big piece you have to move. But it's it's worth it. It's worth it because that door is a super key part of the studio. When you build something oftentimes even when it's custom built the big compromise in the build is the door and uh because you go through all this effort to build double walls and you have double layers of this and insulation and all these things then you put a giant hole in all of that and put <laughs> oftentimes a single door and the door is a massive loss so these you know they worked hard to come up with a door that would still give them that same amount of isolation that the rest of the system provides. And that's no small feat. Um, what is it? I, I mean, I know because I've played with it, but what makes that door so unique in the way that it operates? So the door is, as, as, you, as you both guys 
so as uh, is is pretty heavy and it, that is because it has like uh, five layers of glass and air right so and then when you hang up you know the the handle you can seal the the door so mm-hmm. it's a it's a really a special door it doesn't just lat like a standard door like when you pull it shut a little thing goes click and it latches. But when yeah. this door is pulled shut, there are numerous places <laughs> around the door that are. Yeah. It's like a submarine it. door. Yeah. You know, when you shut the submarine door and the latches kick in, it's yeah. equated to that. But they, uh, the old door, remember you guys had a, you had to like do a second thing where you had to pull a handle yeah. to like suck the door shut. Mm-hmm. And this one, you don't have to now. You guys found a different design. Hey, we have a different design. It's more solid. Right, and the only thing is like automatic, so you close and the doors get closed, and then when you hand up, the, you know the handle, you know it makes the the seal, you know. Mm-hmm. So it has like a two stage latch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one it stays shut, and the yeah. second it, it pulls the seal closed. Yeah. yeah. So if yeah. nobody's ever seen one, why don't we take a little bit of a tour and show people Jerry's booth? We don't get yeah, to do that, that was, very much. That sounds good. Well, uh, first I'll just tilt the the camera up as far as we can practically go here now you can see a lot more of it um and i'll actually and that's a five by five booth uh, on the inside oh lots of room i'm literally moving the entire imac 27 (laughs) Uh (laughs) that's our webcam um there you go you get an idea so did you find any issue i mean you know typically when we have a small room Having a lot of glass is a problem. Did you find that to be a problem? Glass door and a glass window. Now, and, and you can equate to this more because I am not a studio engineer, but when you have one wall that is reflective, as long as the other walls are absorbing it, then you're fine. And it ag- actually adds a little bit of liveliness to the room. If it's all uh, RLX or Viacoustics everywhere, it's almost too dead. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, sucking your ears into the wall. Yeah. Uh, so, no, the glass has not. Done it, but each booth that you buy has to be tuned, and that's why George is here. Mm. Uh, because depending on the mic and where you place it in the booth, and how big the booth is, and what the shape of the booth is, it has to be tuned. Uh, so that's another step that you have to do. Yeah. So we uh, absolutely there's another camera. There's another camera in the booth. Let's so activate we- the extra camera. <laughs> open up, open up the door. Here. It's it's already mounted, so it's okay. Cool. It should be ready. Let's turn to go. it on, and then uh, then we can take a look inside. So. Well, and this view is because space is at a premium in, inside of a booth. Um, I, I use the yellow tech system and I have a pole that comes down and that one pole handles both, both mic booms and my monitor boom that, you, that you're looking at there. Um, Everything is suspended off one central pole. Right. I love that. I love the, the, the clen- I mean, there's a lot going on in the photo It make, you know, the video, it makes it look busy, but there's nothing on the floor. Right. Correct. I mean, it, that's that's the beauty. Of so there's it. there's no clutter, and and the only reason why I have two mics there is because people do come into the studio, and most studios that you connect with, they're either going to want the four sixteen or the U eighty seven. So those are the two mics I have. Very All cool. Right. What about ventilation? Yeah, that's a whole different story. That's one of the reasons why Miguel is 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 down here. You know, taking a look at uh, some of the things I did and what what they have. And Miguel, I, you can probably speak toward this because I think the booth was originally made for like I think Depeche Mode was the first people to have those booths up in uh, New yeah. York. Mm-hmm. But I, weren't they designed originally as uh, is, is if you had like a saxophone and you had a you were at an apartment you could walk inside and play your saxophone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right. And and for VO with the, like a U87 or a, a TL103, which are very sensitive, um, uh, sometimes the ventilation can can really be an issue inside those boxes. And and when people are in there, their BTUs that they kick out, it gets hot in there real quick. So yeah, uh, and I think uh, Dan, you've even made those ventilation boxes your own. You've done some DIY stuff like that. Oh yeah, where you can actually pump some cold air in there and and reduce the noise level down to almost nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's designing a, a ventilation system is not easy because you know every booth is different. Everybody's you know it, it, everybody gives off different BTUs. What is it? A human being gives off more wattage than a light bulb, something along those lines. And uh, you've got to be able to replace the air now. A five by five booth and how tall is uh, it's five by five by how tall? Seven point three. Seven point three. Seven point three. Mm-hmm. So five times five is twenty five times seven. George, you're the mathematician. Seven, <laughs> not tonight, I'm not. All right. It's, you, 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 you've got less than 200 cubic feet of air in there. 
and right. you know, and then you put a, a human in it and all this other stuff. So you're probably moving about 175 cubic feet of air. If you can do it every two or three minutes, that's really all you need to do. Right. And you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be cold air. It just has to be fresh air from where the office is or where the studio yeah. is. And in this case, like when you buy one of these booths, they have a, a really pretty nice ventilation unit. It's called an Aeropack. And it does a nice job. You can, If you want to blast the room out, you can, or you can slow it down and make it quiet. Jerry, being in South Florida, <laughs> being in there for three hours, he wanted it to be icebox cold in there. So he went to another level and piped the AC system from the house straight into the booth. Yeah, well, through baffles. Yeah, through some baffles. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing is, 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 as I'm sure you know, is inside those booths, some people bring their equipment in there. All I have are those mics and that monitor. And you have to, anything that produces heat should not be in the booth. Mm -hmm. You really got to pay attention to the type of lights you put in the booth. Mm -hmm. Even some LED lights kick out some good heat. Um, and you don't need any, anything that's, that produces heat is an enemy inside your booth. No. How about the monitor? Is the monitor making heat? No. It, it, I don't know what kind it is, but it, whatever LED, OCD, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> LED, OCD. <laughs> 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 it's very, uh, very low heat. That's great. And I, I actually like the lights that the, the Studio Bricks provides with that that fit right into the, into the acoustical uh, uh, treatment in there. And yeah, Jerry, we're actually using the lighting that the booth comes with as our video light tonight, which well. works awesome. <laughs> and then Jerry, uh, you know, loving to modify things, added some colored LED strips to the inside of his booth to give it some color accents. That's great. So, All right. yeah. Well, tell you what, we're going to take a break and we've got lots of questions from our vast audience across the globe. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Studio Brooks and Jerry's studio and your questions right after these incredibly important announcements. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, cause I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. VoiceOver Essentials just started their first time ever annual accessory sale. All sale items are 50% off. Now, Harlan isn't usually this generous, so get them before he reverts back to his Grinch self. All sale items are on sale on the page. Just click Deals from the top menu and then On Sale. Items like the Porta Booth Plus Travel Bag, Headphone Hanger, Vox Pop Stop Filter, the Super Light Shotgun Shock Mount, Adjustable Desktop Microphone Stand, the ABS, the Legendary Adjustable Boom Stop, the VoiceOver Baseball Cap, or again, just click Deals from the top menu and then On Sale. Get this stuff while he's got it on sale now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. Hey, everybody. Time to talk about our good old sponsors, Source Elements. They've been doing it a long time with us, and we really, really appreciate it. They're the creators of Source Connect, which is an incredibly powerful tool for connecting your studio with other studios around the world. Chances are, if you're playing at a higher level with agencies, it's time for you to invest in it. But here's the cool thing. You can get Source Connect as a demo. You can go right to their website, source-elements.com, um, and set up an account. You'll also set up an ilock.com account. 
Don't need a little USB iLock key though. Source Connect standard works right alongside, right with your computer. No need for that. Get that thing up and running. Get it, get yourself familiar with it. And then you can say you're ready for Source Connect. You're, you can say you're compatible and that you have it. And then when that job comes up, all you got to do is activate your license. It takes a couple of minutes and boom, you're ready to go. You can buy it up front and pay for it, you know, have a lifetime license or you can subscribe. So it's flexible and they have excellent support around the globe 24 seven. Really great stuff. So go check it out at source-elements.com. Tell them we sent you and we'll be right back with more Tech Talk right after this. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. And we are back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. And we've got George and Jerry Pelletier and Miguel down in West Palm Beach, Florida. We're in Jerry's studio and we're looking at it and talking about uh, studio bricks and booths in general, which we're going to talk about because we have a question from one of our audience, uh, from Patrick Lagreed. He says, I'm really interested to hear more about studio bricks, and I'm hoping you can spend some time on this type of solution and when it becomes the best option for someone as it's something I'm seriously considering adding this winter. If you have thoughts on this particular product or its competitors, sorry, Miguel, um, the pluses and minuses of such an approach and anything else of note, I'd really love to hear it as given my current arrangement, I'm beginning to wonder if this isn't going to help, uh, if this isn't going to be the step that really helps advance my career in 2020. Thanks very much. Uh. I really appreciate the work you put into the show and the knowledge you share with us. Well, thank you, Patrick. Mm. Well, we know, you know, Studio Bricks is, is, a, is a great product. I think it really comes down to cost versus benefit. And are you ready for it? Um, you know, uh, having a booth is, is a really important thing. If you live in a noisy place, if you have a room that is simple and a quiet neighborhood, you don't have a lot of noise going on. Is a booth really necessary? A booth really becomes necessary when you are dealing with other people directly and you have to do stuff live, or if you really have to raise the level of your auditions uh, to where you know they want to make sure that what you're doing sounds right. But if yeah, you, I, I go ahead, I call it quiet on demand. Right. When you need quiet on demand, that's when you are doing ISDN, Source Connect, directed live sessions. Um, and because, you know, Jerry's place here, he's, he's made improvements to this room. He haven't even added an Indo mm -hmm. to make his actual, you know, control room even quieter, but still it's like, if he's in the middle of that session, a, you know, a long directed live studio session, they have, you know, they're listening at the other end through big studio monitors and they have the client sitting on their end, listening to everything going on. You just can't say oh i sorry it's it's gardener day can you guys just you know they're burning hundred dollar bills while they're waiting you know can't do it so that that's that is the time to go with the booth um in terms of you know I, i'm not sure if he's asking me a build versus buy question here because it's not clear but I, I did want to talk about that a little bit go for it you know I, a lot of people ask me about that you know i could build one but I could also buy one. So, I mean, I, I could talk about that for a while, but, but really what it comes down to, some of it's obvious. If you don't own your home, you'd be crazy to build anything because the second you leave that place, you're going to have to destroy whatever it is you built. Okay. So that makes absolutely no sense. If you own your home, but you know, you're going to be leaving in the next three to five years or something, it's not a, your last home or one you're going to be in again, building, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You're going to be investing a lot of time and money and energy into building something customized. And that is going to be a big, it takes a lot of planning, a lot of time, and it's a kind of a big, messy project. And that's going to be a problem as well. So for those situations, I usually say something like the studio bricks makes a heck of a lot of sense. And the other thing about buying instead of building is you have something with resale value and 
there's a lot of companies out there that do make booths with varying degrees of notoriety, notoriety, you know, brand quality, uh, specifications. Um, I'm seeing more and more, more companies popping up all the time. And if you buy one of those sort of off brand booths, when it comes time to sell that booth, when you don't need it or you're up, upgrading or whatever, it's an unknown quantity. But if you have something like a studio bricks, you have a known brand identified quality product that has a resale value. So there's hopefully that will give you a little bit of guidance in my opinion on that. Right. I mean, you, you know, a card has great resale value like a Tesla, you know, you know, you're going to be yeah. able to sell it for, uh, you know, for what it's worth and you're, you're going to get, you know, aside from the money you're making from having a good booth, you know, you're also going to be able to get, you know, a return on your investment that way as yeah. well. Yeah. That's but, a real thing. I mean, you want to already want to be able to have that return on investment and how you earn. And, and if you, if you know that there's going to be a move or an upgrade in the future, being able to, to sell it is a big deal. Yeah. And I just did that. And Jerry, I mean, uh, Jerry, there you go. Did that exact yeah. same did yeah, that Brian, exact thing. Brian Peck from Kansas city flew in here and rented a truck. And we took apart my first studio bricks booth that I bought about seven years ago. And I sold it for a good amount of money. And, uh, before I bought my other one and he was happy to have it. Outstanding. You have it. Yeah. So essentially, you know, you don't need it until you need it. Does right. that make any sense? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> and if you're not sure, then you that then it is really time to hire Dan or me um to evaluate your particular situation. Right. I mean you know, you, so it will we'll consider all factors. Right. I mean, if you have a great closet with lots of clothes in it and lots of room, sometimes that works just as well. So yeah, if you're lucky enough to be in a quiet area, if it's not hundred and ten degrees in the summer in your closet and <laughs> <laughs> you might be lucky. Yeah, yeah. that can happen. Save you a few bucks. Uh, we got a question from Kevin Andrews from Folsom, California, and he says, "Yep, that Folsom, but I'm on the other side of the town from the prison." <laughs> All right, he says, uh, "Mike, a Mike posted on YouTube about his love affair with the Zoom H5 and how if he was starting over, he'd start with that as his preamp audio interface." Then I watched some more of his videos. I guess he was talking about uh, Mike Delgadio, the uh, booth junkie. Uh, and it seemed like when he went to discuss preamps, he wasn't as hot on the Zoom H5 after all, suggesting the preamp is noisy and not that great. So your thoughts? I'm trying to get started in VO and until I can earn a little, I don't have a lot to budget for equipment. Well, the Zoom H5, you know, I think is a remote unit. I mean, if you're on the road or something like that, it's a nice thing to have. But then again, so is your iPhone or your, your Android phone. Because those record just as nice and actually probably have more memory on them. Who knows? Um, but you can plug your a, a regular mic in there and use it as an interface. But apparently, uh, you know, Mike Delgadio liked it. And then he's like, well, maybe there's some better stuff out there. Because Well, you, that's the way gear goes. Yeah, that's true. You, you have something, you use it, and it's just fine. Until... You something, try something, something else a comes little along. bit better. Exactly. And, and and I know and I know Mike pretty well. I I'm I'm a fan of his. I watch his videos. I also helped consult on the design of his equipment signal chain, so I know exactly what he he has a lot more gear than you'd lead on to watching the video. He has a lot of stuff. And he's got some really high end stuff. So he he's likes got stuff. that yeah, he <laughs> likes gear and he and he has the ear from using all this equipment that to discern those little subtle things that the difference between a zoom h5 and something up the food chain or up the cost ladder so you know when you when you're listening to him go on and on and wax on about these 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 factors keep that in mind you know he's heard tons of gear he has an incredibly quiet environment in which he records and this is what he does all day long is test and compare gear so I love that. I think it's great. But remember, he's called the booth junkie <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> he has, he's, a, he's a junkie when it comes to this gear. And uh, if you're a voice actor wanting to get started, don't, don't get too obsessed with it. Uh, you know, watch it for entertainment and for knowledge, but don't feel like you need to be on a constant upgrade path. You don't. Zoom H5 will be just fine. Um, and it's a, it's a two in one thing. You can record to it and you can use it as an interface. So it's, it's multifunctional. 
Is it the one that I would recommend right out of the gate? No, it's going to be like a Steinberg UR12 or uh, the Focusrite Scarlet Solo. Solo or yeah. That's what I'm going to recommend. I'm not going to recommend the Zoom H5. It's, it's a four or even up to six channel multi-track recorder or something like that. Right. It's not what you need. Yeah, a lot of people use them for podcasting and stuff like that, and they're they're and they're good for that. But for a voiceover preamp, yeah, I I wouldn't exactly recommend that either. So, anyway, uh, we got a question from Jack Degolia, whose booth, by the way, we're looking at behind me. Not the oh, same yeah, as the studio Jack's... Brooks both over here, but yeah, that was... <laughs> I know we got booth and a booth. <laughs> we have a booth within a booth, uh, and he's now. It, I guess he's a little confused here, but then again, he is Jack DeGolia. The wording is a little confusing, <laughs> yes, too. Yes, he says, he, he says uh, A-U-N band EQ, what to do in Twisted Wave. <laughs> what do it do in TW. What do it says. do in TW. Uh, <laughs> it's, AU is the Apple designation for an audio unit. So it's basically a uh, an EQ. <laughs> it's a really crazy EQ uh it's it's a super geeky eq with a tremendous amount of control has a lot of different modes that you can set it to um i use it for really particular uh okay i'll tell you what i use it for okay right now believe it or not all i use it for is to reduce the gain by a certain amount after the limiter so i'm using it as a way to re to after i use the limiter which brings it up to full you know all the way to zero i use it to knock it down by three so it comes out at minus three. Yes, that's all I'm using it for is a volume control. But it's also a super precision multi-band equalizer that has a tremendous amount of power, you know, that if you, if you again, know how to use it is really, really useful or you can make a giant mess out of your sound with it too. So yeah. that's, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. And of course, as I always say, if you don't know what something does, don't use it. Uh, <laughs> yeah you probably shouldn't use it you know or have one have somebody else explain and set up for you exactly but jack um, but yeah, jack's got a great voice already what does he need to start futzing around with the, the eq you know. i think he asked because i think i did a stack for him and he saw that in there and he's going what the heck is that because ah. the jack's not the kind of guys that when you send him a stack he's just gonna go thanks and then use it Jack's going to open it and start <laughs> digging around under the hood and go, what's that? What's that? What's that? Uh, he's very inquisitive. Yeah. Um, but again, yeah, if you see that used in the stack, if I make one and it's at the very last thing, chances are all I'm doing is just using as a volume control, which sounds weird, but it's the only function I can find a uh, plugin that can just do that simple function for me in the, in the stack. So right. there you have it. Okay. We've got another question from Haley Gint Ginter. Mm -hmm. uh, George, any progress on getting Source Connect to work with the UAD Apollo Twin on Windows? Also, would love to hear your take on the Townsend Labs Spear Twenty L Twenty Two. Thanks. Why? <laughs> <laughs> this is a perfect opportunity to demystify well, yet again the difference between Source Connect and Source Connect, uh, Source Connect Standard and Source Connect Now. Source Connect Now does not work on uh, Source Connect Now works fine on Chrome. And it only works on Chrome, but it doesn't work on Chrome with the Apollo stuff uh -oh. on Windows. So if you're on Windows and you're using the Apollo USB or any of the Apollo stuff, and you're trying to use something that uses Chrome like IPDTL and Source Connect now, you're out of luck for this for, for now. Um, I haven't seen it function yet because you can't get the Apollo to send audio into Chrome. Um, I, I'm not sure why it just don't work. So, but source connect standard, the version that we talked about in the ad earlier, the version that most of the studios want you to have works perfectly with, uh, the Apollo because it's not using Chrome and they have their own sound driver for it and it works, it works perfectly. So I hope that clears that up. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a great unit, but sometimes people are spending a lot of money for this big, expensive unit. But it's the same as any other interface, except it allows you to use all these different plugins and stuff like that. But it's not the plugins that get you work. So yeah, be careful about this. All those plugins are intended to be used on the front end, and they're going. So when you record through that, you're printing it or recording those plugins permanently. And, you know, the beauty of a stack or something like that is you do it after the fact. You can undo it if you don't like it. You can modify it. 
But when you record it through the processing, you're you're married to it. So it's there. You gotta be careful. Forever. The towns and labs also mentioned. Um, do a little YouTube search uh, for George the Tech and the Townsend Labs fear. I did do a little short review about it. I did six too. months to a year ago. Dan, you did one too. Yeah. Um, so check out our both of our reviews. Check out Dan's and my reviews about the L22 for our thoughts. But it's far more complicated than I want to get into right now. It is a amazing piece of gear, but. It's insanely more flexible than most ever any voice actor would ever need. Yeah, I think basically a hundred mics in one. Yeah, I think it's more designed for a high end engineer who needs a specific tool for doing something like you know multi voice reads and uh, you know or creating an environment or something like that, which none of us have to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're a producer and you do you know you do commercial recording and you have a lot of people come in your studio. This is a cool mic. This mic even can do emulate a 416. So it can do a lot of different things. But if you already have a 416, <laughs> why you're emulate good. it? <laughs> exactly. You know, so it's 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 a special it's a very flexible tool, but it it's more than any voice actor could really ever need if they're just recording themselves. All right. We got one final question here. Not quite a tech question, but you know, we'll throw it in here. Uh from Anthony Schaefer. I says, I'm a stay-at-home disabled dad. What advice do you have for people who are thinking of getting into voiceover, work to make some extra money, and how do you get work in voiceover? Gee, how many times do we hear this one? Uh, uh, it's, it's the most common new yeah. new to voiceover question. Yeah, Let's ask Jerry. Um, Jerry, you answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, are you disabled? <laughs> <laughs> My wife says so. Uh, there, there's a lot of videos and tutorials. Uh, I would say that there are some good Facebook pages to go on. Um, uh, VO Pros, VoiceOver Universe. And if you do a search when you get on Facebook about, you know, how to get into VoiceOver, there are many posts of people who have videos or books or tutorials of what to do, what to expect, some of the costs involved, the training. And I think people who are just thinking about getting into VoiceOver might read that and think, wow, this is a lot more to it than what I thought. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of resources out there. Peter O'Connell has his his tester are you ready for voiceover and there's a lot of schools out there just be very careful talk to the people who actually know not some of these you know you can make money in voiceover things talk yeah. to professionals watch out, you know it's it, watch it, out for yeah be very careful to hire a company who wants to make your demo yeah right off um, the bat. Yeah. you know that that's definitely not what you want to do you um I, there's actually a, i want to be a voice actor.com Check that one out. That's D. Bradley Baker, yeah. a voice actor in LA. He made that website just because so many people ask him. So, and he, it's not something that's stale information. He keeps it up to date. So, that's another really good resource to kind of get an idea of where you're headed with all of this and what you might expect. But as a disabled dad who's home, you've got time and you've got time to research and start checking this stuff out and study. So, Give it a go. Yeah. Give it a go. Give it a shot. Let's see what you sound like. And uh, that's, you know, if it's yeah, you don't have you to sound do. like Marlon Brando or some uh, big voiced person, you just have to be authentic, authentically you and be able to capture that and uh, consistently with good quality. Absolutely. I know it, I boiled it down to that, but it, that's kind of a that's lot what, what it, it is. is. But then it's, then it's, then it's the acting. Absolutely. The acting. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of tech to throw into uh, into less than an hour. <laughs> we really appreciate it. We really appreciate uh, Jerry and uh, Miguel joining us tonight too, and showing Me us too. Studio Bricks booth and their uh, and and Jerry's uh, you know his nice five by five. Can't wait, Miguel. To is there anything coming down the? What do you guys have? Do you have a vision for the future for the company? Like, what's coming up next for Studio Bricks? So we are trying to improve all the time, you know, our products. Uh, we are working always, uh, trying to work with the eco-friendly products and make the you know, making trying to make the the, the booth uh, more uh, you know efficient, eco-friendly, and and trying to improve all the all, all time, you know, this kind of small issues that you know when you are mm -hmm. developing a product. Uh, appear sometimes 
and and always as i told you you know like developing the product and documentation is a big one too right like just figuring out better ways to yeah the, we are working in documentation we are, we already have a really good manuals right now yeah, that's a big one right yeah, yeah a big one a really good one we are working videos we are working yeah so we are improving our marketing and our expansion and yeah we are we are doing pretty good that's great. Great. Yeah. And then we are like developing a new line. This is the office solutions for, you know, office spaces like work for, shared space shared workspace type so, environments. Yeah, we are like manufacturing like right now like, you know, phone booths and work units and meeting rooms and you know, with the studio bricks of course. Like, Very cool. System. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping you guys were going to be like starting a colony on Mars or something. You know, that would be. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> that is the goal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for being with us, guys. Thank you very much. All righty. All right. George and I will be right back to clean things up right after this. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. And you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Snails like it too. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Yeah. Well, hey there. You know, what question do we get most often? Well, far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the VOHeroes.com free getting started in video course, or VO course. You heard right. It's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skis, the skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. As a voice talent, you have to have a website, but what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. 
And we're back. George, wake up. Long day out there. and You've been like all across. It's been a long day. They crossed the East Coast there. <laughs> well, next week on this very show, we're going to have another special guest. And we'll tell you who that special guest is when we get to that. Uh, <laughs> who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week. We got a nice batch of them, which we really appreciate. All names that are familiar because they're they're subscribers. Um, Patty Gibbons, Brian Page, Amanda Fellows, Shelly Avellino. Yay, Shelly. Got to see her over the weekend. Last weekend, Trey Speaks for You. That, that's Trey Mosley. Uh, Tom Pinto, Philip Sapir, Sarah Borges, Uncle Roy Antland Productions, Graham Spicer, Joseph Harrison, and Christy Burns. You know, if if you know if you really enjoy tech talk and the information we're giving you, we'd really appreciate it if you could help us out and uh, donate a little bit to make us, you know, technically perfect. You know, I mean, we're technicians, but if you guys only knew what it takes to do this show live, you know, every other week, I mean, think about it. George is in Florida, you know, and we've got him right here. Somehow we're able to do this technologically. We need your help to do that, and we really appreciate it. There's a Donate Now button right underneath the chat room in our VOBS.TV uh, webpage, and uh, click on that and give us whatever you'd like. You know, we, we yeah, any every little bit helps. Uh, and you could show us your booths, too. Like, here's Jack the Golia's new booth. You know, he's, he's upgraded from his closet. You know, right. I mean, we used to had a picture of his, his studio a couple months ago and there was, you know, his shirts hanging there and, and a jacket and his pants and stuff like that. But that works just as well. But I guess he wanted just a little bit more isolation. A little more isolation. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to be here live for the show, hey, we're here, you know, every other Monday night. We won't be on next week, but yeah, we'll be on next week. So let us know if you can be here if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. And you could sit on the great red couch here and watch the show live and maybe ask a question live. That would be kind of cool if you want to be on camera. Some people know I don't want to be on camera anyway. Uh, but write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and say, I want to be there. And we'll give you the secret handshake and the address and let you in here. That'd be great. You know, we have to do a little bit of an FBI check first, but, you know. And <laughs> background check. Uh, that's right. <laughs> um, hey, you know. Home voiceover studios, if you're just getting started, you probably have no idea what on earth you're doing. Fortunately, you're talking to two guys here, or we're talking to you anyway, uh, who know this stuff better than anybody else on the in the entire world. And George is one of those guys, and if you'd like to talk to him and do business with him and help you get your studio up and running, or if you have repairs to a really important and big highly efficient studio you can contact him at i'm over at george the dot tech and when you decide it's time to stop spinning your wheels on forums and google searches and free youtube videos don't do that and you want like the most direct possible answer to your question that's when it's time to to hire a consultant and that's what i'll do i can you can schedule me or we can do offline work where you send files and i send back information there's a lot of ways we can work together over at George the dot tech and Dan, you're also a consultant. I are, but you're at some other place. And that is, that is home voiceover studio.com. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of the same stuff. I really like working with beginners, people who are like, what do I do? And we can get you up and running very, very quickly to the point where you can learn what you need to do to be very good at recording uh, your voiceover audio. Uh, and if you already have a studio and you really want me to check the audio, I have the specimen collection cup at the bottom of that page. Click on that and send me a specimen of your audio and uh, we'll see what uh, what it sounds like. And maybe it needs some major improvement. Maybe it doesn't. You know, also, I'm offering directing services. Now, if you need help with an audition, a big audition, uh, I am now the uh, the VO director and uh be happy to book a session with you if you've got something really important and you want another ear to hear what perhaps you're not doing right and not connecting with the copy. I can help you with that. So check that out as well. Um, let's see. We need to thank our sponsors, too. Uh, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. 
voiceover extra source elements voheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com and J. michael collins demos all right thanks to all of them also the dan and marcy leonard foundation for the betterment of live webcasting uh our own sue merlino who did a great job tonight always challenging when we're doing a remote but she handles it like a pro because she is a pro don't try this yourself at home uh and of course uh, lee penny for being lee penny well that's going to do it for this week on tech talk number 18 uh we'll be back again next week with another great guest and we appreciate you having here uh i'm dan leonard i'm george Whitham, and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs tech talk tech talk have a great one george go get some sleep I'm going to go drive that Tesla falling asleep. (laughs) It practically drives itself. Bye, everybody.